Well, good morning. This is uh, Bob at R7 Eagle, and today I'm going to dedicate this particular movie here to Josh and Jamie in Texas. Josh is a real good friend of mine, and we're going to talk about this pan today, and I'm going to show you how to use it. It's a uh, tamagoyaki pan. How about that? It's pretty good for Japanese. And I don't speak Japanese, but it's a you could call it a Japanese omelet pan. So there are different kinds of them. This one is made out of, uh, what is this made out of? This is uh, cast iron, and this says made in Japan in the bottom. I'm just turning it up right side. I don't know if you can see it. Rather than in China. Uh, let's see, made in Japan. Yeah, it's there, but you got to kind of make it out. Trust me, it's made in J Japan. It's heavy. And then I have another one over here. This is uh, real light. Half the price. It's... Uh, uh, the coated metal, you know, probably aluminum. It's okay. I use it, what I use it for, because when it came with it, it came with a lid. Let me grab the lid here. This is the lid, which I kind of, kind of cool. When I make my, if I want to make a few pieces of spam, I'll stick it in there and I can marinate it and it, the, all the splatter doesn't go everywhere. So, uh, and then, so that's my, we're not going to talk about spam today. I'm just going to, I love spam. And yes, guys, it is still better than bacon. It has less salt and less nitrates, and I'll leave it at that. So, let's go on with this. With uh, this Japanese pan here, you'll need a wide spatula. And uh, I'll put all the links for all the stuff below. And I'll show you how to use that a little bit later. A couple other things I'm using now is, uh, I've showed these before too. This, these are like 10 bucks. They're really inexpensive. But I'm going to use a small one. We're going to set it over here. And I'm going to use a big one, well, the next biggest one at least. And we're going to uh, put my egg in there. I'm going to use one egg only. And then I have some tomatoes that are already pre-cut and put them on the side. So, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the last thing I got was a milk frother. And uh, I usually use it, I put some cream, maybe some uh, instant coffee in the bottom of a, uh, a cup. A little sugar maybe and uh, I, I mix it up and then I put the hot water on top and uh, It'll turn out to be about the same as a $20 Starbucks coffee. <laughs> anyway, what I found out, I use it for eggs. Because when you put the egg in here, of course you have to get it out of the shell first. What you got to do is you got to mix it well so that the yolk and the white mixes together. And if you use a chopstick and you're beating it, it takes forever and it's not perfect. So I stick this in here like that. Let's see, put that in there and mix it. Now, the little trick with that is take this out of here for a minute. Then when you put it in, like this, and you got this thing going, let me turn it on. You can't even hear it, I don't think, but it is moving. And what I do is I'll go up and down with it, and what will happen, and I can't show you, but the egg will start crawling up the stem here. Let me do this with one hand. Okay, the egg will start crawling from here up to about this level. And you say, oh no. It's going to go higher, but just stay, keep it in the egg, and it, it eventually it'll go down. And it just be, you'll be able to see this again, this circular piece of wire here. And then it's all done. It's all mixed. So, and another, this is like under 10 bucks. And it's really handy. And I like it because it's got a flat bottom. I can set it like this. And the other ones that I saw are curved and they'll fall over and they have a special wrap. Uh, as you can see, I have limited space in my kitchen. So I have to have stuff that's really efficient, all right? All right, and what a couple of the next videos, what I'm going to do, we'll take it over here. I got a new toy. I got my uh, Kosori, uh, yeah, what is this, dehydrator. It's early yet, guys. And what I'm making now is I got corn in here. And it, what will happen is uh, five pounds of corn will make two of these quart jars like that. So anyway, I'll go over that at another time. I do make eggs in here, powdered eggs. And one of my demos that I'm going to do maybe down the road here is um, make use this Japanese omelet with some of my powdered eggs just to see how they come out. So let me put this back in the tripod and we'll start this uh, uh, procedure here. <laughs> okay, so I'll be right back. All right, I moved the, the camera up so hopefully you can see how this works. Before, now I got the egg in here right now. I think I can do this without spelling it like that. We're going to add some ingredients in here that will really make the flavor jump out at you uh, when you eat these eggs. And 
not only do I use them with my Japanese pan, I use them for scrambled eggs, the same recipe. So the first thing I'm going to put in here is some soy sauce. Just a few drops, like that. Put that off to the side. And then I'll take some garlic powder. Any kind will do. And of course you be carefully measure it, just a little bit like that. Not a whole bunch. I already use one egg. Actually this is nice because one egg will look like two. And with economic times the way they are, uh, it's psychological to make one egg look like two. Anyway, let's continue on here. I'm going to use some white white pepper. Just a little sprinkle of that. Sprink, sprinkle. We'll get it right. About like that. You don't have to use too much. And of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dash of sugar in on all you diabetics that scream at me. Just to like that. Not much. Why? Just because I could. <laughs> okay. Now the next thing is really important. We'll set this off to the side. I got my cornstarch here cornstarch and I've got this little mixing bowl the smallest one and I think this is uh, how big is this a quarter a quarter cup but it has little markings on here this is a quarter cup I don't know if you can see it then an eighth of a cup is half halfway down two divided and a quarter is an eighth then I'll take my trusty chopsticks you don't have to use fancy ones and I just grab a little bit like that maybe a little touch more like that we'll put this off to the side then I'll put a little water in maybe a, a tablespoon and I'll mix it good enough now we'll take the eggs back that we just put all that stuff in and we'll pour it right in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this out because I'll need this little thing again in a minute this little thing is called a uh, plastic bowl I guess and I'm going to use the chopsticks just to break the yolk up a little bit like that we're done with the chopsticks now I'm going to take my trusty milk frother and we're going to put it in there I'm going to show you how this works just be patient with it at this point the egg I don't know if you can see it or not I only have I have to hold this because I don't want to um, What's happening is the egg is now starting to crawl up the stem of the milk frother and it'll go back down in a minute. It's starting to go down now. And now I can see the, the uh, circular metal parts of the frother on the bottom. So I'm done. It's all done. It's all mixed really well. The nice thing, if you hold this like this and you turn your uh, hold it like that and then you turn your faucet on, Keep it down low because it'll go all over and it actually self cleans it. So we'll put this back up here. And now we got this all mixed up. A couple other key points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cheese in this. But I'm, what I did is I've had it set now for maybe 20 minutes just so that it's at room temperature because it melts a lot easier. So let me move the camera over so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to back it off a little bit. There we go. All right, take this out. Now you can use olive oil, you could use avocado oil, or God forbid we can use butter, a little bit of butter. I like butter and we're just going to set this. Now I use a gas stove so I'm going to set it on about a level two. And when this melts I'll be right back. You don't, when you, this melts you don't want to have it turn dark brown here or just throw it out and use some new stuff. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back here. I think I got everything adjusted so you can see it. Uh, I had to move the camera around this side instead of the other side because otherwise my arm, because I'm right-handed, will get in the way. So uh, one of the reasons I keep this here, this smaller dish, is so that I, I pour the excess butter out of here and I put it in here because I will need it. And I'll show you how I do that. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my super duper spatula, and this is perfect because it's just about the right size, and I move the butter around. Up the sides a little bit. I like to make it as easy as possible. And you, believe me, you, if you're a bad cook or a good cook, it's impossible to screw this up. It really is. All right. I'm going to let it bubble a little bit more. And then I'm going to take this in and pour a real thin layer, very thin layer of this in, cover the whole bottom. And then I'm going to take some cheese, which will sit over here. 
Okay. All right, we're going to put this in here now. Real thin. Then I'll tip a pan just to move it around a little bit so that the whole thing is covered on the bottom. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll take a couple strips of my pre-warm cheese, you might say, and I'm just going to lay it in here. Nothing fancy about this. I'll put two of them in, and I'm going to wait for this to harden a little bit. And I'm going to start at this end. And this is a cast iron, and I should have told you to begin with, when you first get it, take the handle off, coat it with a real thin coating of avocado oil, and then wipe it down one more time with paper towel, put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes to an hour, take it out, wipe it off, put it together, and it's set to go. All right, we're going to just take this now, we're just going to fold it over. Just like that. Pretty neat, huh? Now, even if you leave it in too long and you screw it up, don't worry about it because the next coating will cover your air errors up. <laughs> All right. And see, I was going to take the butter out and put it in there, and I didn't do that. So I'm going to scrape some of the butter over here. Now we're going to take the next layer, pour the next layer in. We want to pour it in along the edge here. And kind of under. We might be able to get three out of this. I don't know. We'll see. That's okay. And then I got a couple more pieces of cheese left, so we'll put the cheese right in there. This is baby Swiss. You could use any any type of cheese, or if you want to, you could put some vegetables in it. Just leave it cook for, for, for a minute, and then you can start rolling that one. Just about like that. Is that cool or what? And I just hold it there for a minute. Then I'll take it over here and slide it all the way back. And then we'll take the, I don't think there's enough in here, but we'll put it in here anyway. Okay, we're done with this. It's going to be really thin. That's okay. Nothing's perfect. Let that set a little bit. We're going to take and roll this, push it right to the end, and I'm going to hold it there for just a second or two. And you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to take it over and put it on my plate. And I may, if I move it closer, you might be able to see it. All right. Now I'm going to take it back to the other side. And I'm going to lift this up. And we're going to put it, slide it right on the plate, just like that. When this cools, what I'll do is I'll uh, put some water in it maybe, or I'll just use a paper towel and wipe it out, and that'll be it. All right, now what I'm going to do is set this off to the side. I'll be right back. i got to grab a sharp knife, and I'll show you why. Be right back. All right, I adjusted the camera and moved my plate back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut my egg. And, but you let it sit for a couple minutes. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to hold it a little bit. And just carefully cut it. Like that. Helps if you have a sharp knife. There we go. If you try to do this right away when you take it out of the pan, it's going to get it all mushy, so. And one more slice, I think. There we go. Now I'm going to move everything over like that. Set that off to the side. And what I'm going to do now is take some mayonnaise. And I'm going to sprinkle a little meal mayonnaise on it, just about like that. Then I have some chives that I had from my garden, just to add a little color. Spray that on there like this. And then I have some tomatoes that I cut up before, we'll put those on the side. 
by golly, there's your breakfast. Now, I'm going to show you something. When you, uh, I'm going to put a little apart a little bit. You, I don't know if you're going to see it or not, but this is really moist on the inside. It'll absolutely melt in your mouth. There's nothing hard about this at all. Oh, gives a whole new definition to eggs. Let me see if I can hold this up where you can see it without spilling it. Right in here. This is really moist. Right in there. All right. Something else you can do. Number one, don't forget to turn your fire down. If you have some oil in here, you can take a piece of bread and you can put it in your uh, your pan, and you can make toast in it. So if your toaster is not working, or you don't want to drag it out, like I have to drag mine out, I just put it in there, boom, for a couple of minutes, and now I have toast. So there you have it. So let me kind of review this a little bit. Let me turn this. I move my camera now. Everything's out of kilter. Okay. Japanese uh, tamagoyaki pan. It'll last a lifetime, put it in your will. I have another cheaper pan here, but I use this if I want. I can put my toast in there and make toast. My spam or whatever you want to in this other cheaper pan. I don't use this as much. I like this one. For some reason, I can make my eggs or my omelets better in this one than I can in that one. They're both good. Okay. So what I added in here was I put cornstarch to, to soften the eggs so that it keeps them moist. I also put some uh, white pepper garlic powder, soy sauce, a dash of sugar only because I could. I mixed everything together with my super duper and let's see hey, where am I? I'm trying to get, aim this in the camera here. <laughs> this is upside, my, my viewer is upside down, everything's backwards. But I use this all the time. I, well the batteries, I've had this about two months now and the batteries last almost two months. So there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, leave them uh, leave them below and uh, again this is to Josh and to Jamie down in uh, uh, Texas, in a little town in Texas, Katy, Texas I think it's called and uh, this is uh, for you so that you can uh, see how I make my uh, my eggs and we'll turn my camera one more time if I can on my food here let's see here, let's move it around one more time it's a real professional photography job right? let's move this, this back off a little bit there's my setup right there, okay? And maybe uh, tomorrow or the next day I'm going to start going over and show you how I dehyd dehydrate uh, my corn. This will last, I take the air out, this will last uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 years if you do it right. So, and I do it with eggs because eggs now are going up so much. And since I use scrambled eggs basically and this is perfect. So, there you have it. There will be a couple other videos up in the corner, up in here or over there. Leave your comments. If you haven't rang the bell, ring the bell and uh, subscribe and we'll appreciate it. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you the next time around. Bye.